Even though he's a prince, I can see many things that Harry is in desperate need of, like a hug, a better therapist, a clue perhaps, and maybe somebody to show him some tough love for once. And also, we can add to that list a fairy godmother, because in spite of being California's most blue-blooded taxpayer, it sounds like he may need some magic wand-toting wisp, because according to a new report that has come out, Harry has not been getting to the ball, so to speak. I mean, he is kind of like Cinderella with a bald patch, although he kind of looks like a pumpkin. But anyway, according to society journalist Petronella Wyatt, Harry has been left at home. She spoke with the son, and she has revealed that Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, has reportedly been out and about without the problem child of King Charles. Wyatt said, friends of mine who live near them are always bumping into Meghan at parties these days. She tends to leave Harry at home. Well, maybe Harry's just tired. I mean, he is coming off the back of a 21st century version of a Viking raid on the British throne. Or maybe he just wants to enjoy a quiet night in. Maybe he wants to reread some novels or work on his adult coloring book. Or maybe he wants to play some video games. And perhaps this is Harry and Meghan's choice. Maybe they're happy for him to just chill out at home while she goes out there and socializes with who knows who. And of course, has to talk about that title to anyone who will listen. But this comment from Wyatt is coming right after a recent Telegraph report that claimed that a hotel in Montecito has, quote, a room set aside for Harry where he occasionally stays on his own. And also that the San Vicente bungalows, which is two hours to the south in L.A., are, quote, his escape place. Well, Team Sussex was pretty quick to deny this claim. They spoke to Page Six about the hotel situation, saying, This is not true, although I think we need to know that the Telegraph story has not been changed, and Meghan and Harry have also not sent any kind of lawyer's letter their way. Meghan and Harry just passed their five-year wedding anniversary. But it's interesting, because this is a couple who used to take hand-holding very seriously. It seemed like they were super glued together. I mean, even when they went to a war cemetery and then came under fire from some quarters for their touchy-feely ways during the late Queen's funeral, they didn't stop. No matter what we may think of them or their actions, it was pretty hard to deny that the two of them did seem to be in love at one point. But maybe the key word here is seemed. But now it looks like all of that has changed. They don't even seem to be head over heels in love with each other anymore. So last month, Harry and Meghan showed up together for the first time in six months. They went to an L.A. Lakers game with their staff in a private box. That was an outing that was pretty obvious. I mean, basically, we understood that to be their official return to the spotlight. But unlike in the past, when the two of them were clinging on to each other whenever they were out and about, during the game, they were put up on the kiss cam, but they didn't even kiss. It's pretty surprising, actually. Trying to understand what all this means is about as precise a science as reading tea leaves. But this whole left-at-home claim raises some really important questions. Let's look at the fact that they only lived together for a few weeks when they got engaged. Now, their first day was in July of 2016, and for the next 16 months, they traveled back and forth between Toronto and London. They claimed that they never went more than two weeks without seeing each other. And then in November of 2017, Meghan officially moved to London. And that same month, Harry proposed. He used some battery-powered candles that looked like they came from some type of discount bin, but whatever. Any couple getting married who had not even lived in the same country for any amount of time before they decided to get married would be a bit concerning, let alone when we think about all the other stresses they have faced. Well, it's only been five years since their wedding, and I'm sure there were some good times. I mean, if the kids are real, I would assume that their births would have been some good times. But by their own admission, it has been a very rocky road indeed. Megan has talked a lot about experiencing suicidal ideation during her first pregnancy with Prince Archificial, and she's also talked about struggling with her mental health issues. Now, in last year's Netflix docu-series, Harry claimed that he believed that Meghan had miscarried in 2020, thanks to the stress of the court case that she was in with the Daily Mail. To make matters worse, in only a couple of years, Meghan has both become estranged from their families, they've moved countries two times, they've moved homes four times in just over a year, they supposedly had another baby, 
They went to the barricades and taking on a 1,000-year-old institution. And all of a sudden, they needed to start making a lot of money all on their own. I'm sure there was a lot of pressure that they were under, and they probably still are under some pressure. It would be enough to see anyone crumble. And another factor that we need to consider is this. On paper, it seems like Harry and Meghan are very different people when it comes to career and education and interests. Meghan claims to have a degree from a top university, and Harry went right into the military. Meghan spent her free time traveling and writing some eat, pray, love-like contemplative posts for her blog, The Tig. And reportedly, Harry used to enjoy going out on hunting weekends and having some boozy boys trips overseas. Now, Megan has worked in a variety of jobs, including as a calligrapher, as a game show girl, and acting. And Harry, before Megxit, had only ever worked for his family, his grandmother to be specific, first in the military, and then he went on official royal duties. And I don't think that any of these differences are deal breakers necessarily, but still, when we add it all up, we can see that Harry and Meghan really have faced and may still face some difficult times ahead. That same Telegraph story quoted a friend of theirs, saying that they are like any parents of such young kids, frazzled. This person also said, they are really happy together, but at the end of the day, they've been through a lot, and I think they've both felt quite ground down by it all. They're like any married couple five years in. One insider spoke with the Telegraph, saying, Nobody really speaks to him anymore, and even the people who have remained by his side have lately begun to fall away because he is so consistently negative. He's often complaining and rarely asks after others. Well, his mother did say that he was thick. We know that he cheated in school. He only got into Sandhurst thanks to his family, and he couldn't achieve the same success as a pilot that his brother and uncle managed. Now, Harry says that his brain is different from other people's, that he misremembers things or more likely tells lies, and then he believes this is reality. All those drugs and all that drinking have not helped him in the least. He is such an embarrassment. That scam in New York was absolutely pathetic. I'm sure Harry and Meghan thought it was such a smart idea. They thought it was so clever to leak it to the media until all the photos and the reports from the U.S. finally came out. Harry's an idiot, and he's an international laughingstock. So let's just hope that like Cinderella, Harry and Meghan have discovered that they are happily ever after, because I'm really not sure that anything could really change course for them now.